say, I, I love to, to, to ask people what scars they have on them and things who have led the sort of life you have and Jacques Cousteau and other people. Uh, uh, and you seem to be unmarked, but almost everyone I know who has been to the far corners of the earth, wherever those are, uh, and in dangerous situations as you have, has one or two stories involving uh, a not, tear on their anatomy. No, not me. I, I mean, I am an absolutely genuine dyed-in-the-wool coward. I mean, mm. I, I don't go in for being charged by rhinoceroses if I can avoid it. Um, and indeed, really, that, I'm just being boastful. I'm not being modest, you see, mm. because if you, if you are a good enough field naturalist, you should know how close you can get to that elephant before it will charge. Mm -hmm. You should know whether it will do a dummy charge or whether it will not do a dummy charge. Uh, now, some of my friends who make films about natural history actually like being charged by elephants. I mean, they really do. Especially if people see it later on film. Well, not necessarily. But they, that may be so, but they mm. even, they actually think it's a bit of a thrill. Oh. And, and I um, don't think that. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I say I haven't actually been mauled by an elephant or uh, had some frightful injury as a result of handling animals or dealing with animals, I'm actually being boastful, I have to admit, yeah. that I haven't. Because, but, and I regard that as a, as a part of professionalism, if you like. However, uh, the one thing I think would give almost anybody the creeps to hear about is your experience in a cave, a cavern, with a hundred foot high pile of you know what. <laughs> um, have, yes. I, have I clued you into this sufficiently? Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, yes. There's, a, there's one cave in Borneo where we were making, I was making a film about the, about the way in which all animals uh, mesh into one another in one sort of ecosystem. And this vast cave, and at the far end of the cave, um, there was a hole in the roof so that a shaft of life shot down onto the back of the cave. And it appeared from a distance to be a marvelous shimmering golden curtain uh, and I couldn't think what it was uh, and we, we went up to it and um, the golden curtain what it was was it was a huge pile of bat droppings. Is that uh, guano? Guano, yeah, yeah. about um, 120 feet high mm. like a vast sand dune and the the shimmer and the gold came because the entire thing was covered by a moving sheet of cockroaches which were chewing their way through this bat droppings. Now, the bat droppings themselves aren't enormously pleasant. No. And, and to put it mildly, they are ammoniacal. I mean, the stench was really something awful. And then these, these uh, cockroaches, and on the cockroaches, there were little black beetles, undertaker beetles, which were busy eating the dead cockroaches when they were died. And all around the side, there were spiders trying to catch the cockroaches. So it was a very good example of what I was talking about, see, an ecosystem. So we slowly trudge our way up to the top of this um, uh, bat dropping pile. And then I think the estimate was a million and a quarter, a million and a quarter bats that were on the top, then started taking off. And because it was day, they weren't going to go outside, so they started milling around the, the roof of this, uh, of this cavern, a million and a quarter bats, all going around like a great whirlpool. And the heat from their bodies was really very great. I mean, Borneo is pretty hot anyway, um, so it got pretty hot. And the rustle of their, of their wings was really quite mm. deafening. And I had to do um, a, a piece to camera at the top. So <laughs> I looked at the camera and said, uh, you know, it's uh, quite hot in here and there's a smell of ammonia and so on. And there's a million and a quarter bats going around. And a lot of people might think, you know, that there's this old wives' tale that bats get caught in your hair and it's all very frightening and so on. But I said, they have this wonderful system of sonar where they can actually tell where they are and avoid collisions. So in fact, I said, there is no danger whatsoever of these bats colliding with me, even though they're a million and a quarter. And the director said, great, cut. And as he said that, the bat went boing, straight about <laughs> <my> that. <laughs> <laughs> and they missed that on film? They missed it. Oh, they what a shame. It. it sounds like a setup for yeah. John Cleese or something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, you can die of bat bite, of course. So, uh, not many years ago, they thought that bats didn't carry rabies, and then they found oh, out Oh, no, I've, I've worked with those, with those yeah. vampires, yes. And they carry rabies all right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A ranger was killed in Utah by bats in this yeah, but that's only, that's only one, only one species of bat, an awful lot of bats. There are a lot of bats, yeah. 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 
That, that's comforting for a lot of people to know. <laughs> I wonder why people are f fear certain animals and not others. There's almost a universal fear of snakes. Uh, yes. Can that be explained in sexual terms or any th there are theory who do. that satisfies you? Uh, there, there, there are a lot of people who do, yeah. who, are, who uh, the, the snake fear. I think, mm -hmm. I personally think that um, what is most frightening about animals is come to that what I find most frightening about people. Um, and that is total unpredictability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've often wondered why I was frightened of people or nervous of, of my boss or, or not nervous of my boss. Yeah. I had a boss who actually I was really very frightened of. Um, and um, I discovered, I decided that the reason it was that he was totally unpredictable. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell when he went in whether he was going to bite your head off or offer you a drink. Uh, nor could you, and it was entirely his mood, it wasn't what you were bringing, you see. And I, so I was very nervous about him. Now, I feel the same way about animals. Um, what, if we are accustomed to knowing how two-legged things and four-legged things move. When it comes to snakes, they move in a totally different way. You don't know which way they're gonna go. Mm -hmm. And the same with spiders. When you, when you find a very big, hairy <coughs> spider, I mean, a lot of people say, well, it's hairy legs, and it's all very sexual and so on. But I think what frightens me about spiders, uh, I mean big spiders, is that I don't know which way they're going to jump. What they're going to do. And yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. And, and also rats, which I absolutely loathe rats. And, and rats in rooms, uh, they shouldn't be there. They're very unexpected. There you are watching the television, you're quite mm -hmm. happy. And or perhaps you don't get rats in the room where you're watching television, but certainly I'm camping or something, and, and I've got myself organized, and suddenly a rat appears in the stores. That I don't care for. No, rats are almost the opposite of what you want. Mm, that's right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are amazing, though, aren't they? I, I didn't know there was that much to know about rats. and uh, they, they always say drowned like a rat, which, mm. would, which leads to the assumption that rats can't swim. Oh, they can swim, right? And they swim. And they I've, ha I've, I've woken up in various places and had them running over my face. And that I don't care for. Mm, mm. I remember one, once, one, <laughs> once in Fiji, it's absolutely true, uh, once in Fiji we were on a very small island which was absolutely overrun with rats. And, and if you, we're, I was sleeping in a hut and of course you can see where the rat trails are because of the greasy marks they make over the rafters and so on. And I carefully uh, put myself down where I thought there were least chance of the rats running over me. But they were running over me after, you know, you could hear them, and then you felt them on your feet, and then you felt, so I can't be bothered with this. That's and I got up, and I, I thought, I'll have to find somewhere, and I found, actually, the church. And the church on this island was uh, a roof on pillars, wooden pillars, and a coral sand floor. Mm. So, and there's nothing on there for rats. And so I, I lay down in between the aisles, and was lying like this, and went to sleep, thank goodness, at the end. And then I suddenly woke up and was aware that there were about 100, oh no, 20 Fijian faces all peering down at me. And I thought, this you, is it. <laughs> you know, this is the moment. And in fact, human course, faces. Human faces. Yeah. And in fact, of course, I'd forgotten that tomorrow was a Sunday and that I was in the middle of the church and they were wanting to get on with the service. But I thought perhaps I was <laughs> reached the end of my time. I thought you were going to say you'd gone into one of those Indian temples devoted to rats where they oh, that's feed awful. them. And, that's awful. That's yeah. awful. I, I have, and it's terrible. Yeah, they say the rats will survive everything. They survived the atomic bomb on Bikini Atoll. Mm. They've survived uh, mm. uh, just about everything. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>